Unfortunately, when it comes to fragrances, the best ones sometimes end up getting discontinued. In this video, I'm gonna bring some of my favorite discontinued fragrances, get Chad's opinion, and see which one, if he was to only bring back one, which one would he bring back? He's not gonna be able to look at the bottles, and I want his opinion without seeing the bottles, which ones that he prefers, if any. Uh, let's do it. All right. So the first one we're gonna talk about, you may know this one. It's a very popular scent DNA, but I want your opinion on it without knowing what it is. Okay, this smells familiar. More spring, summer-like, fresh, yep. green, smells like a little minty. Minty and citrusy. Okay, yeah. Can you get what, uh, what line it's from? No. Okay, I'll tell you all the fragrances names at the end. That way we can have a non-biased opinion on all of them. But it smells so familiar. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, would it's, you wear it? I would. It smells very, uh, I don't wanna say simple, but like an everyday fragrance for someone who only wants a few fragrances in his collection, yeah. but not like a large collection like you and I. So now we're moving on to tell you my opinion on it after you smell it now. Glad I'm looking this way yeah. and not over there because Rush is flashing us. Okay, so this smells very familiar as well. Uh, very youthful. Do you like this one more? No. No, the other one's better. Uh, tonka bean, spices, maybe a little amber. You're picking up a lot on that. I'm gonna go over the notes at the end. I'm gonna reveal which fragrances these are at the end It is too, definitely right? heavier yeah. than, than the first one. It smells more winter, autumn. It's a lot more sexier than the first one. It is. I gotta say, state that. Yeah. And it smells like a club goer. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I could totally see that. Okay. And it has a lot more projection for sure. Oh, okay. This next one. Here you go, Chad. Just on the number there, yeah. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Oh, hell to the This no is that. a very, very, for a specific type of person, this one. Like, like uber ma manly kind of dude. Oh, yeah. Masculine. Oh, yeah. This is like Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. Like the X-Men character. It's got on my hand a little bit, and I'm just smelling oh, it radiating off there. Oh, my God. Jeez. No, this is, this is smoky. It is woody, dark. Yeah. I don't, maybe a little bit of amber. Oh, yeah. This is, this is a type of fragrance for someone that likes niche, artisanal, very, very narrowed down focus of yeah. not like a compliment getting fragrance. But this smells means. like mainly dudes out there, like The Rock. Mm -hmm. Wayne Johnson. Yeah. You know? I totally see that. Yeah. That. That. <laughs> no. <laughs> you like said that you're looking for like from least to, to most favorite? Yes. Okay. Well, so far that is my least favorite okay. right now. You have the possibility of bringing back only one. That's, okay. that's what I'm giving you. It's well, it ain't hands. that one, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we're moving on to the next one. Ooh. All right. Yes. Here you go. Ooh. It's, it's bubblegum sweet though. Isn't it? So it's not a fragrance that I personally would wear, but right, right. it definitely clears the palate compared to like the last one, because that shit was still yeah. in my nose. This is kind of regarded as one of the best in the line. I'm just gonna say that. It's a little bit of a hint, but. It smells like a one million though. You may be onto something, you may not be. We'll have to review it's, it at the it's end. It's bubblegum sweetness, but more for like the winter time. Do you like this one? Yes and no. Okay. But it smells like uh, one million, but it also kind of has uh, ultra mall JPG vibes. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this one, certain fragrance influencers will say this is the best of a certain kind. Don't give me any hints. I Which that, right. it, that really wasn't in any hints because I don't watch. That's as far as I'll go. That's I don't as far really as watch go. a lot of content no more. I can see why this one gets a lot of love by the community or did at one point. Here you go, sir. Okay, so uh, four and five kind of have the same type of DNA. Do you know which one you prefer though over, over the other one? So far this one here. Yeah, four, okay. It's sweet. It's bubble gummy, like two and four. Mm -hmm. It has like one million vibes with JPG vibe. Yeah, and it's by a brand that kind of balances that line very well. Is this something you'd wear though? No. No, no it's I'm not. A, I'm at a different stage in my life. Yeah, this is kind of the attention grabbers, a lot of them. And I'm more, believe it or not, I'm actually quite introverted. So you've known me for like last year, like what I, how I am on camera is not what I really am like. So it's a bit yeah. of a shtick, yeah. but so, no, this is definitely not. Okay. It's not my person. It, it's not off-putting. It's more for someone your age. Right, right. I completely agree. Now we're gonna get to the point where he orders them, and I reveal which fragrances they are. Okay. Well, number three is the least. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. One stays as one. Two is two. Four is three. Five is four. Okay. So now I'm gonna reveal which ones these are, and tell me if your opinion changes at all. Okay. Yeah. I, I wanted you to not know what fragrances these are, so you were blind. Starting with the last place, we're gonna work our way to the number one. So the last place one that you did not like was uh, Jean Varvato's Dark Rebel. Never liked it. Yeah. Did a review of it and even in my review that I did like seven, eight years ago, same thoughts. This is a fragrance meant for people that like artisanal, niche, high quality smelling fragrances but not necessarily compliment getters. No. And this is why there's, there's this is probably discontinued. So I understand that, like probably not enough people were buying this. We have a, a creeper. Yeah, <laughs> rushes like this through the window. <laughs> so number five is very bad boy though. Like very yeah. like mysterious, edgy. It's kind of smoky, leathery, animalic. It has oh, notes yeah. of like castor 
Arboreum, uh, which is a really weird note. It's animalic and it comes from beavers. If you if you know where you know, it dries down from like kind of a more niche, niche artisanal to being more mass appealing with a leathery. This was style. not a very, like from this brand. It was not one of them. It was a risky move, and some loved it. Yeah, it yeah. was definitely a step outside the box because everything is like mass appealing. Companies want to make money. You know, Barbados is an international brand. They want to make money, yeah. and with this, they probably did not, but there is that little niche market that did love this one. Yeah, it doesn't smell like a Varvados fragrance. No, it's something it something new not. for them, for sure. So the next one that was on the list is Armani Code oh. Absolu. Yeah. And that should have been a little higher then. It is what it is. You can reorganize them after if you do think your opinion changed, but okay. I also wanted to go into it without seeing the bottle if that changes things and without knowing really what it is. Okay, so the next one, 1 million Privé. So you actually guessed it by saying it smells like a 1 million fragrance. You're and that is right. my that is my favorite one from the brand. Yeah, it's uh, it's regarded as a lot of people's favorites. It smells different on test strip though. On the yeah. skin, it's way better. It's I don't care for the brand, but that is one that I kind of wish I had in my collection. Yeah, and I found this for ninety dollars oh, Canadian. That's this cool. guy had no idea what he had. This is reselling for two hundred plus dollars no. Canadian. It does get relations to Parfums de Marly Wajon Wajon. Okay. These are the same price right now, even though this is discontinued. Just go for the Parfums de Marly because they're the same price. If if you're gonna buy it from reseller. So this one is cinnamon, it's tobacco. It does have that blood uh, mandarin orange okay. or orangey smell from the original. This one is kind of seen as the, I think it's more like refined masculine take on the DNA. It's one of the more mature grown up fragrances yeah. from Paco. And I think that's honestly why this one didn't do too well because a lot of the fans of the one million line wanted that youthful bubble gummy sweet and attention I could, grabber. I could see that. People that like this DNA would never have looked in one million's direction for this type of scent. So that's probably why it didn't do too well. But now everyone loves it. It just had to take it getting discontinued for them to love it. All right, now we move on. The second one was actually number two. In that one, La Nuit de l'Homme Bleu Electrique. Okay. Cardamom heavy. This one adds a little bit more lavender aromatic push with some ginger in the backdrop. And geranium. It's rather nice. It pushes out further than La Nuit de l'Homme, the OG, but this is very, very hard to come across nowadays. You can buy it from resellers, but not a lot of people want to get rid of it because they love the scent profile, obviously. So, okay, the next one, the last one, the first one on the list, your favorite, Aqua di Gio Profumo. This is a very, very highly regarded fragrance. It's one of the top oh, rated fragrances of all time. My order is changing now. Yeah, is it? It smells better on paper than it does on, on skin. skin. Yeah, I that, don't like it. Kind of peppery vibe. I honestly don't like it. And that's fair. I think, I thought it was overhyped. You have to try fragrances on skin no matter what, because like Chad said, like his favorite fragrance that he ordered it as would change on his skin completely. And some people that incense patchouli pop is a little bit too overwhelming for them. This got skin. a lot of hype because of Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy, yeah. this was one of Jeremy's all top three for life. I get the hype behind this one. I like the scent profile, but it's not something I would wear all the time. It's kind of like a more darker, mysterious, refined, sophisticated take on Aqua Di Gio, which is kind of an overdone line in a lot of people's opinions. Can I rearrange it? Yeah, so this is his This is his on tester arrangement. Now reorganize it how you'd like it by seeing the bottles now. Okay. Crazy, huh? It did change quite a bit. It did. Yeah. It's always skin chemistry, but when we do these videos, it's on test job. But yes. I just, I've always loved this one. It's and I never fragrance. got it because I I don't have any Paco Rabans in my collection. One million was one of my very first like attention grabber fragrances, so it, it has a place in my heart. But I, I enjoy this one. It's not something that I would really wear. Right. I prefer the original. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. This one's a lot more aggressive. It's almost like the elixir version of why, why I sell La Nuit. I find that this is this is your generation, mm -hmm. and the original one is when you come into this. For sure. And then we got Absolu, which I think smells like an unlit candle, personally. Like one of those candles that you'd smell at like the department store <laughs> without lighting it on fire. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you it kind of smells like uh, Body Works. Bath and Body Works? That's it, yeah. Yes. My wife loves the candles. And, and it's a good fragrance. I think Jeremy said it's his favorite sweet oh, fragrance. I thought it was the golden one. But you're not an Aqua de Jo fan, eh? I'm, no. I'm honestly surprised to hear I that. I prefer the original over this. That's a totally and understandable it's, statement. It's not yeah. because I grew up with it. It's just fresher. It like the original fresher. does bring back some memories because it's Gen X, you know, that's our decade. You know, I, I got it. Don't really wear it but I enjoy it, but it's just, it's this, there's just something in it that I don't care for. And that's understandable. It's all skin chemistry. Like I said, I really
really wanted to go into this without him knowing the bottles, without him knowing what the skin chemistry is, because the lesson is don't look at the bottle and make a judgment and try it on skin, not just on tester. And this one is the one I would bring back. And I agree completely. I don't know why they got rid of this other than probably sales numbers. They should bring it back though. Maybe rename it a little bit, who knows? Or redo the scent profile as an elixir. And I think that would do probably amazing for the brand. But Chad, I have to ask you as a question, if you were to bring back only one fragrance, not these ones, one of your favorite discontinued fragrances, what would that be? Uh, that's, that's tough. It's a hard question. Probably Canali. It's Canali fragrance. It's it's a so Canali is an Italian fashion brand. Okay. Only caters to the men out there. So it's a toss up between Black Diamond and Summer Night. I'll have to look into that one. I've never smelt it personally, but so since we did this video for your channel of discontinued ones, I got a whole bunch of discontinued of my own. So, oh. we, sh so we should do one for my channel. Let's absolutely do that. All yeah. right. I, I bet you have some bangers too, but don't let me know what they are first. No, please. no, no, of course Let not. me go into them blind. Okay. I recommend you check out this video right here where I get Chad from A Gentleman's Journey to tell us his opinions on some of the most popular men's fragrances of all time and rank them blindly. So I'll see you over there. Thank you, Chad, for coming on. Thanks for having me.